Hello, it's me here once again with another video, and today I'm looking at album number 23 in the Uriah Heap discography, and today we're going to be looking at the album Outsider, released June 2014, its length is 49 minutes, its genre is hard rock, prog, and heavy metal. Now, after the release of Into the Wild, there was kind of a new feeling around Uriah Heap, where they kind of melded that sound of the 70s to a more modernness which worked really well, and I really enjoyed Into the Wild. Outsider, to me, sounded a lot more like they were taking their 80s sound and trying to do the same thing and trying to get the same success. And at times on this album, they actually really did get that success. It's just there are some of those tropes from those songs that creeped in, but it still is a very enjoyable listen. Now, on the album features Mick Box, Bernie Shaw, Phil Lanzon, Davey Rimmer joins now on bass and Russell Gilbrook on drums. Now, after Into the Wild, a couple of years after the release of the album, sadly, as I said in my previous video, the great Trevor Boulder passed away and Davey Rimmer was his replacement. Now, I do have some unpopular, probably Uriah Heep opinions about this that I think Davey Rimmer is probably the best bass player they've had since Gary Thane back in around 75-ish or so. So it's been a long time, I think, since that bass has been really booming. But anyway, let's get on with this. Uh, song number one, Speed of Light. Uh, it has, I like how it builds. And once again, as I said, it has that 80s feel to it. Uh, sounds like the endings to the song, though, is it was played on the top of the tuner, which I brought a guitar here just to show you, it feels like it was played right there. So, yeah, and it, it was a good song. Uh, on to song number two, One Minute. I love the piano intro to it. Has a soul feel, almost like it is the soul song of the album. And it picks up really well. I love how Bernie's voice picks up leading into a mini solo like how it always just jumps a register a little bit and uh wish the song though would have ended with a solo and this is something that i'll always say about your eye heap sometimes end it with the solo a solo would sound instead of doing the singing so mini fills singing mini fills just end it with a solo on to song number three the law it's more upbeat than the previous songs uh, love the vocal style on it. The chorus feel it kind of feels forced and kind of unnatural to me. Sounds like the law should have been just more emphasized, like the law, the law, or that '80s type thing you hear with bands backing up, singing, and forcing that law through. It just kind of felt kind of whimperish to me. Uh, like the vocal harmonies. Love the solo. It finally feels like Mick Box's unchained on this part on this song and i love the abrupt slow down and the slight keys underneath on to song number four outsider it's very guitar driven intro i like the vocals and the solo is good song number five rock the foundations i like the first verse chorus rock the foundations should have been emphasized more which is something else you'll notice about uriah heap sometimes is that emphasizing certain parts would have actually probably enhanced the song a little bit more. The solo needed to be longer, in my opinion. The end singing, it should have just been a solo. And that's something that I've said on the other song, is it creeps in here. And it's something that I kind of wish that they would just step back. It kind of, at that point, feels like Bernie's just over singing the song instead of just letting it breathe naturally, which is something they did on a lot of their earlier work, is why it works so well. On to song number six, Is Anybody Gonna Help Me? I love how subdued the opening is. has a nice rhythm to it. I like, and I also like some of the false endings to this song. Uh, song number seven, Looking At You, it's very upbeat, has a nice keyboard solo. But other than that, not really much to mention. On to song number eight, Can't Take That Away. That's kind of a grunge sound to it, if that makes sense. Or, or not a grunge, more of a garage sound. Sorry, can't speak English. To it. Opening that really kind of struck me as like, that's pretty... 
different. Like, I've never heard that kind of really garagey sound from your eye heap before, but it works here. Uh, I like the vocal harmonies. I love the chorus. The solo, though, makes it sound like a completely different song. And sometimes when you do that, you can't do it all the time. Like, a lot of songs, you can't just make the solo sound like a whole different song because then people kind of start thinking of it as another song. But when it's done once in a while and it's just completely out of the blue, it actually makes you think that's actually a really good thing they did it on this song. And on to song number nine, Jesse. I love the opening riff to this song. I love the lyrics. And it's, uh, as I wrote down, one of Mick Box's more mind-melting solos where you can just get lost in how good it is. And this, and it's very catchy. Really, really catchy, this song. On to song number 10, Kiss the Rainbow. Love how it fades in. Very upbeat, solid vocals. And once again, a soaring solo. And that's something I've always loved about Uriah Heep is once you get those really soaring guitar solos or guitar parts where it kind of feels like you're in the air just moving around, it, it just sounds great. On to the last song, Say Goodbye. Very heavy and upbeat. Very heavy and upbeat until the vocals where it kind of slows down a little bit. Now, looking at this album... It is a very solid album. Is it as good as Into the Wild? I don't think so. It's not by much, though. It really isn't by much. I think uh, Into the Wild was its own beast, sort of like Wake the Sleeper. This kind of continues it, but I'm not sure if it's just like the singing at times where I just wish they wouldn't say anything and they just let the song go. And then, like, sometimes it feels like, okay, we get it. Like, the Uriah Heep sing it a gazillion time trope. It wasn't really in play here, but at times it felt like it. So, that's something I didn't quite care for. But, however, I think the musicianship on it is solid. It really is. It's, it, is it as good as mixed guitar work on the last one? No. But the 80s was really not Uriah Heep's best time. But the fact they were able to do this and kind of merge it, I really consider this a transition album for Uriah Heep from the Into the Wild where they took their 70s sound, this one where they take the 80s sound and try to modernize it. The next album is where we see the fruits of that labor because I am can't wait to listen to Living the Dream. I listen to it. It's good record. But anyway... For outsider, anything else I can say? Uh, the I really I really suggest if you're a I Heap fan, especially the more modern Heap, give it a listen. It's really good in my opinion. But anyway, that's me here signing out. Peace.